Hey, what's up? Need a nanny? Here are 10 steps to help you hire one. That's next. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Midlife Mama. I'm Tiffany, and this channel is where I share all of my experiences as a first time single mom in my mid 40s. Today's video is the first in the single mom series that I promised in the 500 subscriber celebration a couple of weeks ago. If you're new here, consider subscribing and joining our YouTube family and coming along for the ride. If you already are a subscriber, thank you so much for being here and welcome back. So to kick things off for this series, I wanted to share with you how I found Nevaeh's nanny and what that hiring process was like. And there are just 10 steps, so stick around for all 10 because at the end I will be sharing some bonus tips and some uh, other information that might be helpful to you as well. So before I get into this, she might be wondering why I hired a nanny and not daycare? Well, the simple answer to that question is I work weekends and daycares aren't open on the weekends. And I'm off during the week, so uh, I don't necessarily need to send Nevaeh to daycare during the week. Uh, what I really needed covered was weekends. So I needed to hire a nanny to cover the weekend because that is what works best for my schedule. I have notes. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with step one. The first thing you need to do is to be clear about what it is you want or expect in a nanny. So you want to write it, write it down if it helps you. You want to write down or be very clear on what your requirements are, what your desires are, and what your ideal nanny looks like. You want to make sure that you know what the age range is you're looking for, the experience, the education, personality, temperament. You also want to know what it is you want the nanny to do other than take care of your child. If you want them to cook, if you want them to clean, if you want there to be some teaching and learning involved as well, you want to have all of that written down and clear because before you do anything, you need to write a compelling job description. It needs to be clear on what you want and it needs to be compelling to get people to apply to your position. Okay, so that is step one. Write a compelling, clear job description, but before that you wanna be sure that you know exactly what it is you're looking for and what you expect. The clearer you are before you start your search, the easier it's going to be to narrow down all of the candidates and applications that you get once you post the job. Step two is to find a place to post your job. I chose care.com and I recommend care.com highly because I've used them a couple of times and I've always found in both of those situations I have found really good child care providers so I definitely recommend care.com there will be a link in the description box below for you to try out care.com yourself uh, but you'll hear a lot about care.com in this video because I used it extensively to go through this hiring process so I posted my job description on care.com. With care.com, you can manage all of your applicants. It keeps them all in one place. It keeps it organized for you. You have all the messages. You have all the profiles you can look at to pre-screen people before you start to reach out to everyone. And uh, it just makes it really easy. It makes the, the, the search really easy. And the other thing I like about care.com is that they pre-screen the people on their website before they actually approve the accounts. So that's also a good thing about care.com that I appreciated and why I chose them. Before you even make a phone call, um, you can look at a profile on care.com and it'll tell you the age of the person. If they've decided to reveal that, it'll tell you what their experience is, it'll tell you what their education is, and it will also give you some reviews from, from other people on the website who have used them. So it's a really good way to pre-screen your applicants and get a good pool of candidates. Step number three is once you have your candidates picked out, this is where you're going to start to reach out to those candidates and 
try and schedule uh, some time to connect. So I chose my top five and then I chose five alternates. I also ranked my top five from one to five, being the person that I liked the most being ranked number one. And then I ranked them accordingly after that. Care.com makes it very easy for you to reach out to people, but for safety reasons, they do not reveal email addresses or phone numbers in messages. So your initial contact with your candidates through this website or through this app will be made solely through care.com. Like if there's a phone call and you'll send the first messages through care.com that way. And that way it keeps both of you and safe and keeps your information from being put out there. You don't have to give out your information right away. You don't have to give out your email address or your phone number right away. You don't have to start doing that until you actually have made contact with your top candidates. When I was hiring Nevaeh's Danny, we messaged back and forth through the app and we scheduled number step four, which is the phone interview. In the phone interview, you wanna cover the basics first. So you wanna cover name, email address, phone numbers, language requirements, you wanna cover salary requirements, and then you wanna make sure that you're clear on what your non-negotiables are. Those are things that you absolutely will not compromise on. So your deal breakers, you wanna make sure you cover those, and if at that point the person you're talking to doesn't meet your non-negotiables, you can politely end the phone conversation there and let them know that you'll be making a decision later. If they meet your non-negotiables, at this point you can move more into what the job entails, the job what the job description is, and you can get more information on their background and their education. If you need a list of questions, I will post a list of questions on my blog over at midlifemama.com and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. So if after going on into the job description and you like what you hear at the end of this phone interview, you can move on to step five. And step five is to schedule an in-person interview. All right, you keep you keep smiling at the camera. What well, mommy's gonna finish the video? Okay, is that all right with you? Deal. Deal. Okay. Okay. So for the in-person interview, I chose a neutral place. So you want to choose to meet in a neutral place. I chose um, a park. We met in uh, a local park, and I took Nevaeh with me. You don't have to take your child or your children with you. But I do have to say that taking Nevaeh with me was very helpful because it was a way for me to see how she was gonna interact with Nevaeh and how Nevaeh was going to react to her. Um, and during that process of that interview, she was very attentive to Nevaeh, but not too attentive. She was aware of the danger, danger zones, and she, um, she took initiative and she, uh, jumped right in to help take care of Nevaeh. And I liked that about her because she seemed really concerned with Nevaeh's safety and with Nevaeh's comfort. So it was it was helpful for me to take Nevaeh to the interview with me, um, but you don't have to do that. In this interview, we also covered scheduling. We talked more about what my parenting style is and what I would expect from her if I was to, if I was to hire her for this position and we really just had a conversation. So I got a feel for her personality, I got a feel for her temperament. And if at that point, if you've gotten to that point and you like what you see, then you can move on to the next step. But really use your use your gut. Your gut, your instincts and your mo mommy instincts will kick in here and you wanna make sure that you're in tune to that and that you listen to it because it will tell you yes or no. You feel like you want to move forward at that point, you can ask for references and also get permission to run a background check. Step seven and eight are partners. You want to do work. You want to run your background check. And I know it's tedious. Nobody likes to do this, but you want to make the phone calls and check the references. And if you have trouble checking references, you're not getting people to call you back, don't be afraid to contact your candidate and say, hey, I need new references, or I need you to get in contact with your references and let them know that I'll be calling to get a reference for you. 
um, because I had a little bit of trouble reaching one of my um, candidates references but she just made a quick phone call and I got a phone call back right away and also you want to make sure that I keep my phone on do not disturb because I get a lot of sales calls so um, if you are like that if you keep your phone on silent or do not disturb and you're expecting calls make sure you remember to take your phone off do not disturb and uh, answer unfamiliar phone numbers the other thing you could do is put the phone number in your phone and label it uh, reference for the candidate and that way they'll be able to they'll be able to contact you with your with your phone still on do not disturb it's just a quick little tip something I learned while I was uh, checking her references and couldn't get phone calls back I, I actually had to return messages but there's a way to get around that if you don't want to take your phone off do not disturb step nine is to offer a paid trial run so I offered to have um, Nevaeh's nanny come over and hang out with us for a couple of hours and it was paid I paid her to do that she came in she came in so she could see where she was going to be working she could see what my parenting style was and I could see how she interacted with Nevea and how Nevea reacted to her as well so it was another chance for Nevea to see her face and to get familiar with her I also gave her a house tour and let her know at that point what she would be doing like what a typical day in the life would be for her if she was Nevea's nanny so this is a great way, another great way to get some final um, instincts about the person you're considering hiring. You are considering bringing this person into your home to watch over your baby or your babies. So you want to make sure that you feel really good and really comfortable about her. So this is a great way to do that. If at that point you like what you see. You can be, uh, you can offer any, answer any final questions, go over any final expectations, talk about schedule, talk about uh, salary and pay scale, and then uh, take a day or two to think it over. With Nevaeh's nanny, I just, I, I knew right away that this was gonna be a good fit, and um, I was pretty sure she was gonna accept the position. But if you were not sure, you may have to do this these steps over again so I would say save step nine for uh, just people you are absolutely sure you want to hire um, don't do that with everyone you just everyone you interview you just want to make sure that is you absolutely definitely want to hire these people and this trial run is just confirmation of that so once you've gotten your confirmation <laughs> <laughs> Once you've gotten the confirmation and the trial runs over and it, everything looks good, then you can make the final offer and schedule the first day. And that's it. That's the 10 steps to hiring a nanny. I am excited about this process. It was tedious. It was a tedious process. But Care.com made it very easy for me to find a good qualified nanny to take care of my precious cargo while I was at work. If your situation is like mine, you work weekends, daycare is really uh, a non-starter at this point because I'm home during the week. If your schedule is similar to mine and you need weekends, then this is a good option. Nevaeh's vocabulary, her language skills have doubled since her nanny started taking care of her three days a week. I think that has something to do with the fact that she gets one-on-one -on -one intensive learning with, with her nanny. There's no television, there's no screen time, there's uh, play and there's books and there's singing and there's going over shapes, colors, numbers, ABCs, all of that. So her parent, her, her caregiving style is very similar to my parenting style. So there is consistency for Nevea. It's, it's great all around. The only thing I need to tell you about hiring a nanny is that it can get expensive. So you want to make sure that you have budgeted for it and you pick a salary range that fits your budget. And hopefully the person that you want to hire is okay with the range with the salary rate that you are able to pay. 
it can get expensive and it can get pricey. So just just bear that in mind. But I am not one iota disappointed with Nevaeh's nanny. She is worth every penny. And I found her on care.com. And I would recommend care.com to any mom who's looking for a qualified nanny to watch their babies. So, like I said before, there is a there's a link in the description for you to try out care.com for yourself. There's also a link in the description for you to visit my blog where I have post where I have posted some questions uh, that you should be asking a potential nanny and some inter interview tips to help you out with the process. The other thing I wanna share with you is that once you hire your nanny, you wanna make sure that you have a good communication system with them. So on Nevaeh's nanny's first day, the night before I emailed her a menu for the week and I also did some meal prepping ahead of time. You don't have to do that. You just wanna make sure that if your nanny is gonna to need to prepare some meals that that has been covered in the process um, up front. But I did some meal prepping to make the day easy for her. I did her. I did an email to her um, with the menu. And also, there are times when she goes home before I get home, and that's if either my mom or my brother come home early, early and she's able to leave a little bit earlier. But if that happens, she always emails me a download of Nevaeh's day. So I know exactly how Nevaeh's day went and when I come home, I also get that download. So I know exactly what's been going on. I know the last time she ate. I know what she ate. I know what she learned. And all the things, I think if you have your child in daycare, they give you a sheet of paper that says, that gives you a report on your child's day. She does the same thing. She just tells it to me verbally or in an email if I don't see her before she goes home for the day. And it's worked out great for me. Hopefully this process helps you find that same situation with your own, own child if you need a nanny. And hopefully this information was helpful to you. If it was, give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have a nanny or if you're looking for a nanny or if you've had any experience with care.com. Let me know that in the comments as well. You can also leave questions in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Until next week, Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're here. If you haven't done that already, turn on notifications so you get notified every time I post a video. And until next week, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.